Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam, and uh, as it's Friday, I prepared a presentation with a lot of math formulas for you today. Uh, but before that, uh, let's. Uh, I need to, to tell you some things about uh, language modeling that has been bothering me for uh, quite a long time. Because uh, language modeling is basically one of the simplest tasks in natural language processing. And uh, as a user of uh, one of the Slavic languages, uh, what was important uh, step for me in uh, and made uh, much progress in uh, natural language processing and in uh, language modeling uh, was not attention mechanism, it was uh, uh, subword tokenization, mostly. So yeah, highly inflectional languages uh, benefited mostly from, from uh, the tokenization, not from uh, upscaling, probably. Uh, the learning objective uh, in language modeling, and this is shared uh, in large language models too, the first objective is to be able to construct sound sentences. Uh, we do that by uh, maximizing the probability of proper sentence, which is translated to maximizing the probability of the next word given previous words or next, wor next token given previous tokens. And uh, it's, it's almost always approximated by uh, taking the fixed window of tokens in the back. Uh, yeah, I, I know the, it, it, uh, it is a large context uh, right now, but uh, it's still, it's still uh, somewhat fixed. Uh, the second thing that uh, is, uh, in my opinion, very problematic with language modeling with large language models is the RLHF objective, which means uh, on the one side we've got better human feedback, we've got better suited answers for uh, humans, but on the other side the answers, the model is rewarded for providing answers that sounds convincing to average person. No matter uh, how wrong the answer is, if it sounds convincing, there is high probability that the model will get rewarded for providing that answer. So it's probably one of the sources of the hallucinations, as uh, it is named uh, right now. Uh, I know we, uh, in the past days, in the good old times, we called that different. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, LLMs behave just like the uh, Deepak Chopra wisdom generator, but upscaled. Not to mention that, uh, I don't know if there is any person that knows on what data ChatGPT is trained and the, uh, future versions of, of that GPT-4, GPT-5. I, I don't know if, if there is any one person that knows or is able to tell us uh, what data they are using to train. So uh, who am I to judge uh, that things? Uh, I'm an NLP researcher. I've been doing NLP research for more than 10 years, mainly for Polish. Uh, I teach machines. Uh, I propagate uh, XAI, so explainable uh, AI, AI explainability, uh, some insights uh, within the uh, decision process of uh, the models. And uh, uh, for a living, I work as a full stack machine learning as a service engineer uh, at Reasonfield Lab, where we provide the end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning services. Um, so before, before I tell you how to do watermarks, we need to uh, know uh, why do we need watermarks. Uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, in this country the, uh, you, you don't like this guy. Uh, but 
No, he, he, and he, he isn't, uh, he isn't uh, like surprised uh, and uh, wondering why do we need watermarks. Uh, it's a feature of inbred. inbred. And uh, it's one of the, uh, the, one of the things that uh, uh, probably are in the future of uh, internet with AI generated text everywhere. Uh, we need to protect ourselves from training uh, artificial intelligence on data created by artificial intelligence. Uh, it would probably result in some kind of mode collapse. Uh, but beyond that, uh, there are also very, very important uh, things that are related to all the dangers of uh, hallucinations. Uh, there was a case at the University of Wrocław, my alma mater, that uh, some report uh, that uh, was worth uh, millions of euros uh, was uh, written by ChatGPT and just copy pasted. Uh, yeah, and and that's not touching the science. The science, uh, if you if you start doing science using ChatGPT, uh, yeah. We, we, can, uh, we can be doomed sooner than we expect. So uh, we basically need to, I'm not talking about, about just students uh, copy pasting uh, LLM generated text as assignments, but uh, every other people in, in every other uh, real life applications, uh, we need to be aware if at least they have read and maybe modified some of the content and not just copy paste it and started to play CS. Uh, one more thing, uh, there uh, were some black box methods. I will not be uh, uh, doing a deep dive in uh, black box methods for uh, detection of AI generated texts. Uh, what is uh, interesting in that, that one metric uh, used for uh, detection of AI-generated text were, was perplexity. And, oh, sorry, it's Friday, no formulas. Uh, so uh, perplexity is a measure based on current entropy, but uh, what is important is uh, what it was used for. It was used for measuring how good language models are, but with some kind of soft assumption that there is some low, lower boundary that is human performance and we are closing to this lower boundary uh, uh, from above and uh, yeah, uh, maybe at some time uh, good language models will have at least perplexity may be a bit higher than humans. With LLMs, we've got a whole different story. Their perplexity is lower than, than humans, which basically means that we are using more diverse language than AI text generators. But this is, this is, uh, uh, an interesting uh, paradox with, with this perplexity that uh, yeah, measure once used to score how close we are to humans is uh, we are approaching uh, LLM detection from uh, the different side. So we are saying that AI generated texts are basically more predictable than human uh, language. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just interesting property of the perplexity. Okay, so let's get to the watermarking. I'll check if I've got time for this, yeah. Uh, uh, so um, Scott Aronson uh, proposed uh, these properties of, of uh, watermarks and uh, these three properties are quite, uh, quite, I think quite enough, at least at this stage of uh, research on uh, watermarks. Uh, first, users 
shouldn't see that uh, there is a watermark. Uh, it should be easily verifiable, and uh, uh, I mean that uh, we shouldn't uh, need uh, another model like uh, uh, LLM trained to detect uh, LLM generated text. Uh, and uh, the most problematic one is it should be robust against attacks. And I will show that, uh, yeah, we, uh, we are in very interesting stage of research on watermarks when uh, basically we should uh, rather think of it as uh, to what degree watermarks are robust uh, and not that uh, watermarks can be 100% robust to all the attacks. Uh, so the basic idea of uh, watermarks uh, is that we divide words into green word list that we want to use and red word list that we don't want to use. So for a um, given prompt, we can uh, generate text which has no watermark and it has, on average, half uh, of the words are red, half of the, oh, sorry, it, these are tokens. So half of the tokens are red, half of the tokens are green, and with watermark, we've got a significantly larger amount of uh, green uh, tokens. So, uh, there are basically two free approaches to the, the mainstream approaches to generate text. Uh, one is the greedy search, so we just uh, go through uh, the most probable word every single time. We can do a variation on that with uh, multinomial uh, search when we sample at each step from multinomial distribution and we can do a beam search, uh, which is uh, looking for a bit more optimal path. And what we want to do, uh, on the example of greedy search, we can see that uh, starting with the, the initial probabilities of, or logits of uh, the three words are 15, 30, and 0.04. What we want to do and how we want to uh, perform watermarking is by changing these logits so we pick different words. Uh, yeah, and there, is, and there is beam search. In beam search, we do that basically in the same way. Uh, the only difference in uh, beam search is basically that uh, beam search uh, can choose more optimal path through uh, hold the graph. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it isn't exactly bound to previous decisions. Um, okay, so uh, first variant of uh, watermarking is uh, generating text with a uh, hard constraint uh, list of red words. Uh, and for, we are looking at the previous tokens. We are computing hash of the previous token. So for each token we are generating, we are creating new hash to seed the random generator. We are creating the split of the vocabulary in the green and red list at each token from start. And in this uh, setting, we sample uh, the next token from uh, the green list. So uh, the problem with that is that uh, <coughs> not always uh, we have uh, a big choice of uh, words. There are settings professionally called uh, of, uh, there are places of uh, low entropy that uh, basically um, 
discarding the red uh, word would uh, cause degradation in quality of text. Uh, so uh, uh, we can do a different thing. Uh, we still have a green list and a red list, uh, but we increase probability of uh, each green word. And we recompute the softmax. Uh, so if uh, we basically, if we have large choice of sensible words that are highly probable at the beginning, uh, we still have, uh, probably we will still have chosen uh, a green word. And if there is this one word that fits on 99% and it lands on the red list, this method will still reduce its probability, but uh, probably not to the extent that, it that this word gets discarded. Okay, so how do we verify uh, watermarking? Uh, this is the part uh, where, uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, we don't want to have a very complex verification scheme. So what we uh, need is uh, the same hash function that we were using and the same random number generator. And we go over the sequence, taking previous token as uh, hash, as seed to random number generator. We are repeating this whole process but we don't need to have any uh, language model uh, for the verification. And uh, what we compute, we basically compute uh, the statistical test for the expected number of uh, green tokens. In uh, the simplest setting of hard constraint, we expect uh, uh, we expect uh, like 50-50 uh, split of uh, red and green tokens in text that is not watermarked. Uh, and for soft constraint, this, uh, uh, this uh, z-score gets a bit more complicated. And let's, let's uh, I'm not going to get into the details of that's uh, right now. Um, there are also attempts on code watermarking. Uh, and uh, um, this algorithm uh, called SWIT is uh, also addressing uh, the problem I mentioned of uh, the uh, low entropy setting. Uh, so, uh, while coding, we are uh, more often uh, in a situation that we need to write certain words. So uh, it only um, uh, it only watermarks part of the code. But uh, I will show you later uh, attack methods on uh, code watermarking. And in my opinion, unless we will start watermarking on the AST level on abstract syntax tree, there would be no uh, good watermarking uh, for code. So how, how robust are the um, watermarks? With human paraphrasing, it uh, could be uh, avoided the detection of watermark, but it's a question if we uh, give AI-generated text to human and it gets paraphrased, do we still want uh, this text to be watermarked as LLM-generated? I think it, it depends on the degree of modification and <coughs> with larger degree of modification, we get uh, a larger uh, probability of uh, not being detected uh, as LLM generated. Uh, machine paraphrasing, uh, 
I will show you uh, it's uh, still uh, a valid attack. I it depends it depends on the setting. One thing to remember is that uh, uh, watermarking has uh, in the uh, in the let's say most uh, common setting it has publicly available API to uh, verify watermarks. So it needs at least monitoring for excessive use. Uh, for similar texts from similar IPs, because we can uh, just try to check if, if we modified the text enough to uh, bypass the uh, watermark. Uh, there is a paper uh, that showed that uh, just by using a, but it's still it's still a computational effort. And uh, by using uh, some GPT-based uh, judge of quality, uh, they were able to uh, create, uh, to modify the uh, LLM-generated text in the space of high-quality texts to the extent that uh, it was not uh, detectable by the uh, watermark. But as you can see, it was modified. Uh, it's probably the 40, 40 second step uh, of this modification. So it's all the matter of uh, the complexity and computational time uh, for uh, the modifications. Uh, here is uh, the graph showing uh, with the green dots, it's the GPT-4 judge uh, score so it's the quality uh, metric. So basically the quality doesn't uh, change uh, with their modifications and uh, the Z-score, so the probability of, uh, let's say probability. So the, uh, the metric used for watermarking is uh, dropping down and down and down with each modification and it results in <coughs> Uh, in the text being modified, being still of a quality, but not being detectable as watermarked. And of course, uh, code. Code watermarks can be uh, bypassed uh, quite easily. Uh, there was the paper that uh, showed a very simple algorithm by traversing abstract syntax tree, placing some uh, basically doing doing uh, operations that didn't change the code uh, semantics uh, and th that was enough to bypass the uh, watermark for code. Uh, so a uh, few notes about uh, implementation. Right now it's uh, quite easy. Uh, everything is in uh, hugging phase. Uh, so we've got uh, the watermark config uh, class uh, we've got the watermark detector class. It all works uh, together in few lines of code uh, just by plugging that in. If you want to use, uh, if you want to use uh, some uh, different uh, watermark, you can take a look at uh, Mark uh, LLM repository at GitHub. You can uh, plug in with hugging face, you can plug in into ge the generative model uh, something that is called Logits processor and it modifies the logits of the tokens. So it's a perfect uh, hook to uh, plug in the watermark. Okay, I think that's all of me talking so Thank you for listening, and if you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you so much, Adam. Please, if you have any questions, go to the, the first mic. Um, I have a question. Um, 
all of these uh, watermarking schemes kind of depend on the model actually kind of cooperating with us, you know, that there's something that modifies the probabilities of the logits on the server side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Is there any work being done on making this kind of not the case, you know, making some sort of scheme that will be able to maybe detect LLM produced text without cooperation of the LLM itself. I know that it's a, like a like a long shot, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there's any research done on that. I mean, um, watermarks are basically a white box uh, yep. method for doing that. I'm mentioning that uh, also because uh, I know I don't know if I if I uh, said about that, but there is high probability that uh, the EU will uh, enforce some kind of uh, measures on uh, regarding ethical AI, et, uh, yeah. etc. But yes, watermarks are uh, basically to be implemented by the uh, developers, by the creators, by the providers of LLMs. Uh, there is the, the, the whole different branch of black box uh, detection, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, there were there were some controversies uh, with uh, high rates of uh, false positives, and I think that OpenAI even closed some some of its tool. I'm not sure if there was there was definitely something called GPT zero. Uh, there were tools, as I mentioned, based on uh, perplexity mm -hmm. and uh, another method call, uh, called uh, burstiness that measured uh, basically some of the like inconsistencies in uh, in sentence lengths, uh, in, in emotional expressions, mm -hmm. uh, etc. But I'm not. I'm not sure if if we can uh, train such a model. Uh, yeah, it it would require us to to train uh, a model, and I think uh, retrain every uh, every iteration or for every mm. uh, like uh, every single model that we want to detect. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you can check if. Uh, there is there is a company in Poland, uh, and I know that they are uh, sometimes talking about that. They are providing the anti-plagiarism uh, tools for uh, the whole academic world in Poland. So uh, maybe there maybe there is there are some resources uh, regarding uh, the black box detection. I don't know if if I've answered. Uh, you did. You did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for your awesome talk. <laughs> this is the first one. And um, second is, yeah, actually um, in the UAI Act, um, there is a line that it will be mandatory for um, AI produced context to be watermarked. And um, not, not only in a way that it can be detected, but in a way that the consumer um, will see that the text was generated by AI. So. Do you have any idea? And if it's okay, if you don't, because I think government didn't think that through either. Uh, either. Um, do you have any idea how that could possibly look? Um, I mean, I can, uh, on the regulatory level, I can check that and <laughs> get back to you. <laughs> uh, because I have, I, be, have okay. I have access to, to the, like, uh, I, I, um, working with, with the members of the Normalization Committee in Poland uh, regarding uh, AI Act. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if the watermark will be visible or if it... it I think uh, we will settle at the level that uh, there will be a label that this was created by AI. Mm. I mean, th these are... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting because... Uh, I mean, uh, if if the watermark would be visible, it would be easier to attack and bypass. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I think that uh, these regulations uh, are only concerned by um, the fact uh, exposing some content to the public, 
and parking, this is content created by AI and not, uh, and it's not like uh, safeguarding that uh, someone uses uh, AI generated content to uh, use in, in some different context. Uh, and I'm not sure because uh, like the conclusions from from the, this paper on attacks uh, is uh, very sad and it looks like um, the, uh, at least right now uh, the watermarks can be bypassed and yeah, they but always can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's yeah. another topic. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> we can talk always yeah, about that, I guess. Security <laughs> by obscurity. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank your you. questions. Thank you, Adam Kishmarek, for the great presentation. Thank you.